Now we're going to consider the gains from international trade between people in different countries, and we're going to focus what's called comparative advantage. Well, the main difference is when there's trade across borders between one country and another, there's the possibility that trade may be restricted, unlike the restriction that it might occur if you're trading with friends and people in your own neighborhood. Let's begin with some definitions that focus on this idea of comparative advantage to begin with is simply what's called absolute advantage. That's a case where a country can produce a good more efficiently than another country. A comparative advantage is a different concept. It's really comparing not only the relative efficiency of producing two goods, it's comparing the relative efficiency in two different countries. Examples will help a lot. So we'll consider the United States and Korea. And we'll consider two goods. Pharmaceutical production could be a vaccine and some electronics production could be TV sets. In this particular case, we're assuming that in the United States, one day of work produces six units of vaccine and three TV sets. In Korea, one day of work is assumed to produce one unit of vaccine and two TV sets. So you can see right away that the U.S. has an absolute advantage in producing vaccines and also an absolute advantage in producing TV sets. Well, let's consider which country has the comparative advantage in which good. How do we find out who has a comparative advantage in each good? Well, we need to consider that table carefully. Again, remember the U.S. has an absolute advantage over Korea in both vaccine and TV sets, simply because six is greater than one and three is greater than two in that table. We say the U.S. has a comparative advantage, however, in producing vaccines, these pharmaceutical goods, because six over one is greater than three over two. The capability of the United States in producing pharmaceuticals is six times greater than Korea. It's only 50% or three over two times that Korea can do in the case of TV sets. A country cannot have a comparative advantage in both goods, so by definition, once you understand that the U.S. has a comparative advantage in vaccines, it must be the case that Korea has a comparative advantage in TV sets. Go to think about the advantages that might occur in terms of improving the gains from trade in this circumstance. Let's do this numerical example. So it may be that the unit of vaccine is $100 and the TV set is $100. They have the same price. So you can exchange a unit of vaccine for a TV set. It's one to one. And how can the U.S. gain from trade in this particular case? Well, for example, U.S. could reduce TV production by three units by moving some workers out of TV production and move those workers into vaccine production. With the numerical example, that would mean it could increase vaccine production by six units. Now, with the six units of vaccine, U.S. can go to Korea and trade for six TV sets. At the end, it has six TV sets, which is three more than it had if it was producing the TV sets by itself. It's actually able to consume more TV sets and the same amount of vaccines as it did before. So this is a gain from trade. Now you might think if the U.S. is gaining from trade, then obviously Korea can't be. Is Korea being exploited by this comparative advantage? By no means. Let's consider Korea, because Korea can also gain from trade. Let's see how it does it. Suppose Korea increases TV production by six by moving workers out of the vaccine production into TV production. But now it can take its six TV sets and trade with the U.S. and get six vials or units of vaccine. So Korea comes out ahead and has three more units, three more vials of vaccine than it did at the start. So let's draw a picture. And in this picture, let's be sure that we remember what the production possibilities are. Let's Let's assume to start that the price of a unit of vaccine for a TV set is one to one. Let's assume that in the U.S. we have 10,000 workers that could be either producing the vaccines or the TVs. And let's assume in Korea that we have 30,000 workers that could be producing either vaccines or TVs. Now with this information we can draw a production possibility curve for the two countries. And let's draw them side by side. In this diagram we're going to have vaccines on the vertical axis and TVs on the horizontal axis. And let's let this diagram on the left be U.S. and this one on the right be Korea. If they were all producing vaccines, you have 60,000 units of vaccine. Now let's draw the curves. As I mentioned, if in the U.S. all 10,000 workers are producing vaccines, we get 60,000. That's the maximum that we can produce. If all those 10,000 workers are producing TVs, we get 30,000. So those are two points on the production possibilities curve. And indeed, as we move workers out of vaccine production into TV production in the U.S., we move down along that production possibilities curve. We can do the same thing in Korea 
as well. Suppose all the 30,000 workers in Korea are producing vaccines. In that case, we get 30,000 vaccines, one per each worker. And if they all go into producing TVs, the 30,000 workers will produce two each, in which case we'll get 60,000, and that's the production possibilities curve for Korea. So they're different, and that's what the curves would look, would look like if they were unable to trade. But now let's consider the possibility of trade. And using the curves, let's just suppose that the U.S. specializes in producing vaccines. Okay, so it's going to be up at that point producing 60,000 vaccines. But now if it can trade, and it also can trade at a one-to-one -one ratio, it can trade vaccines it's producing for TVs. And so it's possible now through trade to get out there to actually be consuming more TVs and more vaccines than the production possibility curve in the first place. The same thing can be true in Korea. Suppose Korea specializes is completely in producing TVs, and it would produce 60,000 TVs, but now it could go and trade those with the United States one for one and get as many as 60,000 units of vaccines through trade. It's shifted it out. Its consumption possibilities, if you like to think of it that way, are greater than its production possibility. It's almost like a new technology has been invented. It's not a new technology, it's just trade. You've been watching The Benefits of International Trade. For more of my economics videos and other educational material from the Hoover Institution, please visit policyed.org.